As 2017 draws to a close, it's that time of the year where we take a look back at some of the great games that have released over the last 12 months and pick out just 10 that really stand out amongst the rest, which is no easy feat as there have been a lot. I've tried to be as objective as possible in my choices, but it's important to remember that these are all based on opinions and you may well have different ones. I've also avoided placing these games in any real order, minus the very last one that will be crowned Project Gamer's Game of the Year. To start we have Nier Automata, the sequel to 2010's Nier and developed by Platinum Games. The game places you in control of an android called 2B with the task of helping to retake Earth after it's been invaded by machines, leading to humanity taking refuge on the moon. With a massive 26 endings, you'll need to play through the game more than once to piece together the whole story, but you'll certainly want to as it's extremely well crafted and worth your time. Like with any Platinum Games title, combat is extremely fast paced and satisfying. You'll be dodging, slashing and shooting your way through an assortment of interesting and zany creations in the dystopian settings you'll travel to. There are many games like Nier Automata, one that's potentially easy to overlook, but certainly not one you should. A remaster of the original three Crash Bandicoot games was heavily requested by fans for years, and much to everyone's surprise was finally officially announced at E3 of 2016. The remaster was handled by Vicarious Visions, who had previously only worked on the small handheld games in the series, but proved they were absolutely capable of the task, doing an awesome job of bringing the 90s platformers to the modern day, whilst keeping the gameplay and iconic character designs intact. New features like time trials were added to the first two games, as well as the addition of Coco as a playable character, and a number of other small quality of life features that made for a much more streamlined experience. As far as remasters and remakes go, the Crash Bandicoot Ensane Trilogy is a fantastic example of how they should be handled and also highlights just how well the games hold up, even today. Next we have Uncharted The Lost Legacy, the last in the series to be created by the extremely talented team at Naughty Dog and the first not to feature Nathan Drake as a playable character, instead following Chloe Fraser and Nadine Ross. Set six months to one year after four, Chloe enlists the help of Nadine to find the legendary Indian artifacts known as the Golden Tusk. However, they also have to deal with new antagonist and warlord Azav, who will stand in their way at every turn. Before arguably being the best game of last year, it's no surprise that Lost Legacy is also a fantastic experience, with graphics that are still jaw-droppingly good, especially when played on the PS4 Pro, incredible set pieces and interesting characters that make Naughty Dog's last entry in the series one of their best. It doesn't need to be said that Sonic has had plenty of ups and downs over its 26 years of history, however Sega made the smart move of going right back to the series 2D roots with a game that emulated the classic Genesis titles, and the result was nothing short of fantastic. The game was amazingly developed largely by long-term fans of the series such as Christian Whitehead and Simon Tomley, who had previously created successful fan games in the past and were clearly passionate when working on the project. Featuring 8 stages of old and new, Sonic will face Eggman and his new creations the Hard Boiled Heavies, egg robos that have been granted new powers thanks to the Phantom Ruby, the new central object that's also tied in with the less stellar Sonic Forces. Sonic Mania isn't just a great nostalgia trip for those that played the original games, but a genuinely fantastic platformer with plenty to offer both old and new fans. Assassin's Creed has seen some fatigue over the last few games, however after taking a year off, Ubisoft have managed to reinvigorate the series with the release of Assassin's Creed Origins. Like most AC titles, Origins features a new setting and protagonist, this time set in ancient Egypt and following Bayek, a Magi turned assassin. The game makes some welcome changes to many of the fundamentals you expect in an AC game. Combat has changed to a hitbox based system as opposed to the paired animation system used in previous games, meaning bouts are no longer a play out of scripted animations nor purely one on one fights. There was also a much heavier focus on RPG elements and acquiring new loot, with plenty of weapons at various levels and rarity to find in the massive, breathtaking open world you have to explore. Ubisoft took the tiring series and managed to make it fun again while also offering a ton of content that even after 50 hours of gameplay I felt like I still had plenty to do. It's easy to write off this next entry as a Dark Souls copycat, but not only does it encompass what made that series so great, it also puts his own spin on many of the components to make it feel like a fresh experience. One of the biggest differences is the ability to change your stance with any weapon, altering its speed, power and combos on the fly, giving the player plenty of options on how they tackle situations. The game is set in a fictional version of the Sengoku period in the 1600s where you play as Irishman William Adams as he fights through various Japanese locations, slaying plenty of samurai and yokai along the way. Naturally you'll also encounter plenty of nail-bitingly hard bosses that will certainly test your skill and patience. As well as being a great alternative to a Souls game, Neo also successfully manages to create his own identity from that which it's inspired from. 
I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the Switch's biggest exclusive, Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey's big gimmick this time around is the ability to throw your hat at different enemies and take control of them. Except it isn't a gimmick at all, it's a feature that makes the game stand out so much compared to virtually every other platformer out there at the moment. None of the enemies feel similar to each other, they all have completely unique controls and reason to use them in order to reach locations or complete tasks and ultimately obtain the main collectible, Power Moons. There are over 900 in total, with around 150 needed to beat the game, but you'll feel absolutely compelled to go back and explore the kingdoms way after the ending to try and collect as many as you can. Mario Odyssey is inventive in so many ways, from its gameplay right down to its level design that makes it a must-have if you're a Switch owner. When Guerrilla Games announced they were working on an open-world RPG, many were skeptical of how it would turn out. Not surprising considering their history of game development is steeped almost solely around the Killzone FPS series, yet when it hit shelves, it was met with huge amounts of praise and for good reason. Horizon features a unique post-apocalyptic world, melding a regressed primitive civilization against an assortment of futuristic mechanized creatures. As Aloy, an outcast orphan from birth, you'll find yourself dismantling plenty of them in your playthrough, as you go on a journey of self-discovery and also to uncover the mystery behind the machines. Aside from a great story, characters and world, Horizon's biggest triumph is with its graphics, that when paired with the PS4 Pro is one of the most visually stunning games out there and you'll often find yourself taking pauses just to appreciate the scenery around you. The latest game in the Legend of Zelda series is a remarkable entry that surprisingly does away with many of the formulaic elements that it's known for, right down to the iconic green tunic. Breath of the Wild immediately gives you a huge open world to explore and encourages you to do so with a seemingly endless amount to discover on your adventures. There are a total of 120 shrines to find, they each pose their own puzzles and challenges to overcome, as well as four dungeons that are vastly different from those in previous games. With a weapon system that constantly forces you to find new gear as your old ones break, you'll quickly learn to adapt and be as resourceful as you can to survive. Breath of the Wild is not only one of the best Zelda games released, but possibly the best ever, becoming the new standard for what action-adventure games are compared to. Finally, that leads us to the last game, Persona 5. Persona 5 faced many delays, with an original release date of 2014, but the wait was sure worth it, as the final result was an unforgettable experience that I urge anyone with even a passing interest in JRPGs to try. Persona 5 places you in control of a protagonist that is sent to Shujin Academy after being put on probation for a crime he didn't commit. As in this unfamiliar location, he'll quickly discover he has the ability to enter palaces, distorted worlds through the minds of corrupt individuals, and awaken the power of personas. He'll also come across a varied cast of memorable classmates that also find they too have this ability, as they form a group known as the Phantom Thieves to seek justice against those that deserve it, with plenty of twists and turns along the way. The real charm of the game is through how you split your time, spending part of it as an average teenager, keeping up in school and forming friendships through confidants, while the other half is entering supernatural dungeons and tackling shadows. It's an uncommon blend, but one that works so incredibly well. Lastly, the game oozes with style, from the character designs all the way through to its menus, not to mention it has one of the best soundtracks featured in any game ever, and there's also no slouch in the content department either, with around 100 hours required to finish the game, a rarity in an industry where most don't come nearly as close. It's for all these reasons that Persona 5 is Project Gamer's Game of the Year for 2017. Which game of 2017 would you crown as your game of the year? Maybe it's one that's not even featured in this video. Either way, let me know down in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to seeing which ones you pick. That's it for today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more content just like this. Click the thumbnail on the left for 10 great looking games coming in 2018, or the one on the right for another of my videos. Thanks for watching as usual, and I'll see you on the next video.